Hi, my name is Tracy and I'm a mortician. And my name is Trish and I'm not. Welcome to the first episode of Are You Dying To Know? We know you are. And are you really, really dying to know? So basically we're here to tell you the ins and outs of what happens inside the mortuary. It's not all spooky spooky, but it is quite graphic at times. And so we will forewarn you if there's something that you need to know that might be a bit disturbing. Hanging out with Tracy for a while, I've seen and heard lots of questions that people have asked her and um, some of them are pretty funny. Yeah, and bizarre. Some of them are a little disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> So this is to answer all the questions. We want you guys out there in YouTube world to write your questions below um, and send us your comments and we will attempt to answer some of those in later episodes. We really want to know what you're dying to know. In this episode, we're just going to talk about a very basic prep. Okay, but I think we need a question first before we go into a basic um, prep. Mm. Okay, do you just do hair and beauty? <sighs> no, no. Far from it. Far from just hair and beauty. But there'll be a lot of questions about that and we can go into that in more detail. Later on. Later on. A mortician who takes care of the deceased once they're passed in a mortuary. Um, dying in an accident, nursing home, hospital, anywhere. And the mortician's there to take care of everybody's loved ones, families and friends. This is our friend, Calvin Spine. Hi Calvin. <laughs> so, Calvin's actually here for a purpose. Calvin's here to hold my hand. I haven't been exposed to a lot of the stuff that Tracy's going to be talking about. I'm interested. I don't think it should be a taboo, but I haven't experienced that before. So Calvin's going to get me through the challenging bits by holding my hand yeah. and I'll be going through it with you guys at home. Yeah, Trish is dying to know. Because when they do that in a nursing home, we can get them within the hour of them passing away, a couple of hours easy. They get transferred straight into the funeral homes. Now then, the body is really warm. Do nursing homes have somewhere to store people that have died? No, no, no they don't. Um, now that's why they're transferred straight away into our care. They have to be transferred as priority because they have no refrigeration uh, in nursing homes. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Very warm. And I prefer to deal with cold bodies. She likes her bodies cold. Even though the touch is cold, it warms me a lot to know that I'm taking care of your family's loved ones, friends. We'll get taken to the room where the person has um, passed away. Normally, we wrap them in a sheet. We do have plastic on the stretcher that we um, carry the deceased on to, but we always wrap them in a sheet, then place them on the plastic, then zip the air cover over the trolley, trolley that we transfer them into the vehicle, and then break, bring them straight into the fridge where we need to refrigerate as soon as possible. Okay. All right, so they've arrived there. So you come in for work. I'm going to work, I've got my paperwork and I've got Betty that needs to, um, prepping today for our service tomorrow. Now, little Betty's already in the fridge. Um, What's she wearing? Well, she's come from a nursing home and she passed it away through the night, so she's got a nightie on. Okay, so they don't undress her, she's not no. naked. It's... No, 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 no. Okay. No, no, sometimes um, if it happens through the days, they actually in the nursing homes, once they've passed, sometimes in the staff in the nursing home will bathe them and dress them mm -hmm. there. But say um, the family want them redressed. In that instance, they want them in a special dress, a special outfit, a special yeah. suit. Or... Yeah. I would um, give a uh, little Betty out and um, take her out of the sheet and the bag and dispose of all of that and place her on my table. And, and this but is how, how do you do that? Like how do you, the size you are, pick up Betty and put her on your table from a, a drawer that's over the other side of the room? Um, I, well I have a, a lifter where I'll get the tray out and um, Betty's on the tray and the tray goes onto my lifting machine which I'll take to my table um, where I'll just pull the body bag over onto the table where I've got Betty secure on my table and then I unwrap her yeah and I do that with big people little people turn in um, very small but I've got big muscles the preparation is wash Betty I'll wash her first I'll wet her down with a, a shower just a shower thing like you have in a shower she's on the table and 
I'll shower and I'll wash her in uh, antibacterial wash, but just normal shampoo and conditioner. We don't need any fancy for that. Um, I'll dry her and then we place a nappy. We place a nappy. This is just in case there's any leakage because we can still have leakage. Um, but a nappy is always placed on everybody. And then I'll place a, a towel over Betty once she's dried. And then I'll go to do the basic face prep, which is all Betty's having done. She's got no injury, she's got nothing. Just, yeah, a little warning, sense of warning here. Yeah. A little bit graphic, yeah. but not too bad. Okay, so I, I've got a little bit, and I've got, I've got a tray of chemicals and uh, cotton equipment. I need uh, some forceps, um, a needle, um, some wax thread. We wipe the face with an uh, oily chemical just to take any of the uh, residue off the face. So I'll clean the eyes with some cotton, uh, with some disinfectant. And I always start my preps from the uh, top of the head, the head down. So I've cleaned all the eyes out. What we need to do, because eyes kind of sink a little bit once you pass, is we have eye caps. And eye caps just like a contact lens, it's, but it's a thicker contact lens and it has little little triangles. If you look closely, and there's little triangles stick up off the eye caps. So it's like a little barb. It's a little spiky, but nothing. And what that does is hold the eyelid down in place. And I'll place the eye caps in and I'll set the eyes. Now the eyes have to be set in a certain way we don't just pull the eyelid down over the bottom or pull the bottom over the top. It's uh, and the top three quarter the way down and the bottom quarter. You can get clear eye caps, which I prefer, because if the families are viewing and they might open the eyes for whatever reason, could do the clear so you can't really see. But you get flesh coloured ones, and I don't like flesh coloured ones because they'll make you look like a zombie. I don't know that. Scary, yeah. I don't like the flesh. I like the clear ones, that's nicer. So I'll place the eye caps, set the eyes, so you know, this closing the eyes in the movies doesn't work. <laughs> Why? Why? Because um, what one rigor mortis could be sitting in uh, in a very early As they're stage. Open. Yeah, and sometimes when they're wide over, they're dehydrated, uh -huh. you know, and that's really hard to close them when okay. they're dehydrated. And also so drink lots of water, people. <laughs> and then from the eyes, I shall go down to the nose where I use my disinfectant um, spray again on the end of cotton and with my forceps I'll go inside the nose, right in the nose and clean anything out, anything. Now they could have very clean noses or they could be full of all kinds of stuff, yeah, gooey stuff, boogies, all kinds. But we get them clean and we need it very clean because we don't want anybody looking up the nostrils and seeing all that dirt in there. So I clean the nose out and then I have two long strips of cotton which I then, with my forceps, put down the nostrils, both nostrils. And it has to go down to the back of the throat. Right, so you hook them up and over and in. Yeah, and the reason for that is for any uh, fluid that may come up. So they're like when you see in movies when someone gets injured in a sporting match and they stick tampons yeah. up there. same thing. Okay. Yeah, but we put these down so you can't see them. Once they're placed in, they've disappeared and you can't see them. So the family aren't going to go and look at the nose going, oh, I can see cotton sticking out. You won't see that. Then from the nose, I go to the mouth. And now the mouth can be sometimes a bit gooey because they could have just eaten a meal. And if that happens, food's still in the mouth. And that's a bit smelly. Yeah, so you could be cleaning out food out of the mouth. But what we're doing again is disinfecting the mouth. We're cleaning the mouth out. Good cleaner with the cotton. Use a toothbrush as well, and I brush the teeth. We'll brush the teeth and get the teeth clean. Any residue on the teeth comes off. And once they're cleaned, I get uh, some cotton with some disinfectant on it. We pack the throat with cotton, but not too much. If you start putting too much cotton in, you're gonna change the shape of the neck because it's gonna get bigger and bigger here. All we're doing is wanting enough that fluid won't come up. You don't want it to have big pads of cotton out here and changing the shape of Betty's neck. That's just not So what, what is a cotton fabric? It's just normal cotton wool. Oh it's cotton wool. Like wool balls, just cotton, yeah. Yeah. The mouths are open, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the mouths are usually open like Okay, that. so you're shoving it down with your forceps. Yeah. Okay. That's right, I'm putting it down with the forceps. Right. Um if the mouth's locked shut when I get them, yeah. I still need to get in and close them and I have a, a tool 
which I can put in between the teeth and press the tool and it'll open them up because the jaw's probably got rigor mortis in, that's why I can't move it. But once I use this jaw release, that'll open the mouth up. But generally, little old people tend to go like that. <laughs> they do have the mouths open. And that's what the family see in the nursing home and that's why we need to have them viewed so they do not have that lasting memory of them with their eyes and the mouth open. So the cotton's in, and now this is the bit that you may all not know about. And I do a mandible suture. And one way we suture in a circle around the mouth. Now with my needle and my waxy thread, I shall make the first incision with the needle up under the, behind the jaw here. Well, if you press here on your hand, in your finger, you'll find there's a bit of a dent in the mm -hmm. hole. I've got the dent. Yeah, that's where your needle comes through to the bottom of your mouth. Yeah, I can feel it. So we will make the first needle in through here. That needle is going to come out through here, mm -hmm. the front of the teeth mm -hmm. here. Okay, I'm going to take that needle off. That threads out here. I'm going to thread it back onto the bit that's dangling out here, and I'm going to go back in the same hole. Because yep. we can't go down here as we'll have a thread. We're into the same hole and this time I'm going to come up behind mm -hmm. behind the jaw this time. Right. And then I'm going to go up a thread up to the nose, out of the nose, through the nose, out there. So it's all hidden. Uh-huh. And then down here. <laughs> now I've got two pieces of thread dangling here and what I'll do is tie a knot, pull that and that brings the jaw closed. And once I've got the position right, I, it's a slip knot I put in first so I can manoeuvre that slip knot um, and so I can manoeuvre it and move the mouth because I don't want the mouth to go <laughs> and, and I, uh, <laughs> not a good look. And I don't want to, you know, have it like that, you know. So we've got to get the position right, close the mouth. Now the trick with getting the mouth closed properly, before we tie the suit off completely where I can't move it anymore, I've then got to check my symmetry. It has to line the edge of the mouth to the middle of the eye. If the mouth, end of the mouth here, or over here, it's either out of whack. or it's too, or it's out of that. Mm. And we don't want that. And once I'm happy with that, I'll put a double knot into my suture, cut the thread off and took the remainder down here. Oh, it's not very pleasant to look at. My fingers are clean. Uh, I haven't been to work today. Uh, <laughs> clean. And took it down there and that's a basic face prep. And then I'll dress her, yeah, after that. Basic makeup, just light lipstick, nothing, not lashes, one disco dance and it's just very subtle. It's just to give them warm colour. It kind of still look the same when we pass the waist. A little bit makeup for Betty, that's all the family want, just to make it look like she's peaceful. What we do next is obviously place Betty into her coffin. Now the family would have chosen a coffin and what we do is we have a, a lifting device. Straps on, I put a strap around the head, the shoulders, the bottom and the legs and the lift little Betty up and place her in a coffin. So it's all very gentle and little Betty's placed and I will make sure that she's settled, she's lying correctly and place the hands whichever way you know sometimes place them some people request this look normally I would just place them across the lap normally the side sheets that go around the uh, coffin there's drapery around the coffin and that usually comes probably up to the um, waist and normally all it, all that's viewed is from the waist up right yeah yeah and so then what she goes back in the fridge in a coffin yes we then um, place the um, dignity cloth over the face. The privacy thing is for the families to know that their loved one is being taken care of, not just displaying bodies in and the flesh. Left, right, and center. Yeah, yeah, that does not Like happen. old Calvin here. Yeah. Thanks for that, Trace. Now we all know what a basic body prep goes like. We can all rest assured knowing that we know what happens to little old Betty when she passes away in a nursing home. I think next week, I think we'll talk about tools. Yeah, we'll have tools so you can get a better understanding when I'm going aneurysm hook, forceps, plugs. I don't know what a hook is, but... <laughs> <laughs> eye caps. I'll show you eye caps, plugs, forceps, hooks. Hooks. Uh, we'll see the hooks, people. Yeah. So stay tuned next week yeah. for show and tell.
Yeah. And um, and we might even get in the mortuary one day. Yeah, one day we will go into the mortuary. I'm going to need Calvin for that. You yeah. will. But please, any questions, any anything, just message below. We'd really like this to become um, a show that is based on your questions. Mm -hmm. So please, don't be shy. Ask your questions below. Tracy's going to tell us as honestly as she can. It can be challenging and heartbreaking. Um, it, and I've cried buckets of tears, but I've also had laughter. Yeah, and it's not as scary as you all expect it to be. Yeah. We're not here to glorify death. I'm hoping that you'll get a good insight and a clearer um, uh, knowledge and knowing of actually what does happen. Don't be afraid. Please come back. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Does happen in the mortuary. Uh, um, oh, Ooh, the mortuary? <laughs> Have you been to a mortuary? <laughs> I haven't. Mm -hmm. See ya! <laughs>